Hello crafty friend, it's Justine. Today I'm going to make a circle card and show you an anti size card at the end. And I'm going to be using all of the products from the Seahorse Kisses line that Dawn Holsegel just put out with Spellbinders. And this is such a stunning collection. I, I've used it quite a lot. I have already posted a beautiful slimline card on my channel on the 10th and today I'm making another one here and I'll be having one more video with another A2 and a 5x7 card coming up later this month. So if you're interested, stick around, subscribe, and you'll be able to see it there on my channel. Now you might notice that this is actually the card. The circle is the card. It's not a rectangle. It's just kind of an odd shape to do for a card and I thought why not? I got the nautical theme going with the seahorse and I thought it kind of reminds me of like a porthole of a ship. So that's kind of the look I was going for. So to make this, I just folded this paper in half like so. I put a die, a circle die on this paper like this and had it overlap so it wouldn't cut right here. Now you might be asking, well, what is the die? I used the postal edge die to make this one and I used a couple different circles. Now all four of these are from the postal edge circles so I'll link that in the description for you to check that out but it's it's basically a circle and there's these little dots going around the edge. I didn't use any of the postal stamp circles that are from that same set but I just kind of wanted to go with a nautical theme because we have like the under the sea you know so I'm going to position that to be on the top and then my next piece here is going to cover up that gap so the from the front you won't even be able to tell that it's not a perfect circle now this do you see the dimension on that look at that it's so cool this circle I went this circle was just a plain circle that I cut out with these little dots going around the side and then I used the embossing folder that is part of this collection and made that beautiful net design on the back on the paper here. So I'm going to put that right onto my card and just add some dimension to the back. I just think this net is so cool. It looks perfect for this seahorse kisses whole collection is just gorgeous now because I have this circle die I'm going to try to remember that this is the top because that's where my card is going to be opening so I'm going to try to remember that's the top now on the bottom I was running out of this color so I had to cut this part off just for the sake of getting the whole die on there because I wanted to use this size but I was running out of space but that is just fine because we are going to because I am going to hide that missing area discreetly <laughs> by putting it on the bottom now right about there just centering it with that missing edge on the bottom now the next piece I used vellum and I used my blending brush from Spellbinders with a little bit of some Salty Ocean Distress Oxide and just kind of went lightly. Did not even do like a crazy serious blend on this at all just to kind of give it like the smoky fogginess of water. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> but that was kind of the look I was going for. Now with vellum, you kind of have to be careful because if you just smush this down, the glue is going to show in the background. So I am going to position it with this bottom piece here and my seahorse is going to cover up that area. So that's okay if the glue shows there. Then to get the rest of my card, the rest of the vellum on, I'm going to be discreet about several little glue drops that I'm going to put on and they're going to be small because I am eventually going to put um, some sequins over those glue dots so when you look at the vellum from the front you won't be able to see the glue dots at least that is what I am telling myself in my brain 
And I'm also going to take just a tiny bit of glue going around the edge and hope that that seals the vellum to this circle piece here. And I'm assuming that part of my seahorse is going to be covering up some of these glue dots. So maybe I'll put a couple in the center piece here. Okay, here goes nothing. I'm going to press down. And if it does kind of wave a little bit, that's okay because this is supposed to be a with seahorse in water. Kind of like you're looking out at the seahorse from like a port hole. Okay, so far so good. Things are working out. <laughs> Worst comes to worst, I can just grab a large gem from my stash and pop it over it. So, yeah, anyway. <laughs> now, this seahorse is so pretty with that blue foil. Do you see that? I think that was the cobalt foil from Spellbinders. I could be wrong. I'll double check when I am editing this and link that in the description. And then this thanks is also just regular gold foiling that Spellbinders has, which is just honestly my favorite foil. Um, I know that I, I really like the Aurora foil, but gold is just so universal. Now I did take the postal circle die. You can see here, there's those little dots and I die cut my seahorse to have the same matching dots. So when I put my seahorse down on my circle, those dots are going to line up with the bottom of this part here. So it doesn't even look like this was separate and it was just all die cut together, even though it was not. <laughs> but that's kind of the illusion of the die, you know, there we go. All right. Now, yes, several of those dots are covered up with my seahorse, so that is fabuloso. Okay, <laughs> I'd love to pop up my sentiment, but I think I'm going to just actually, with my sentiment, I'm going to glue it right to my card base. I'm not gonna pop up this one because the dimension on this card is really going to be those sequins. So I'm gonna put it right about here. I don't wanna cover up that adorable little fin that the seahorse has there. So I'm gonna tuck that fin in, this one, right here, like so. Then I will grab my sequins. These are clear sequins, left over from a card kit from Spellbinders from last year at some point. I don't remember the months when it comes to sequins and that is just the way it is. <laughs> Now, the reason why I'm using clear sequins is because I'd like it to look kind of like little bubbles because we are underwater with the seahorse and I'm just going to put them on the part that has the vellum just because I want it to look like that porthole, you know, and not put it on the teal part because that really is net focused. I love that Spellbinders has different sizes for their sequins. They have large and small, and that really helps give a little bit of different, a different look to the whole card. And they have so many different colors now. And if you subscribe to their card kits, eventually you're, you'll end up with a lot of sequins, which is great. Because then you can use them on other projects like this. <laughs> Then to finish off my seahorse, I am going to add a little bit of Wink of Stella just to the seahorse, just to give that seahorse an extra little sparkle and an extra little liveliness. The good news is Wink of Stella does not affect the glimmer, which is awesome because then you can have glimmer and Wink of Stella, which why would you not want more glitter? <laughs> and shimmering. Now you can see the glue behind my sequins here because the glue is wet when it does dry. I will take some pretty pictures of this so you can see what it looks like without that glue behind there, but there is a look at this finished circle card. Oh, I never said the dimensions for it, so I will just do that now. So this circle die is one, two, three, four and a half by 
four and a half it looks like so I guess <laughs> as best as a circle can be four and a half by four and a half but <laughs> now like I said I would show you another a two size card with this collection here it is I have that stunning thinking of you sentiment on the top that's from the collection as well and then we have the seahorse on the bottom again gold foiling the sentiment matches the seahorse which is just so pretty and then if you can see here I did take my Copic markers and color this and then I took some blue Copic markers in the background just to give it the illusion that this was in water and this card really does show off that embossing folder quite a bit because it's not as covered up as this one is and then I added some really pretty sequins that were from a, another Spellbinders card kit. Then to finish it off, I added Wink of Stella, of course, to my seahorse. So there's a final look at this card and my circle card. I'd love to know which one do you like better. Is it the circle or the A2? Let me know in the comments. And if you're going to pick up the seahorse, I want to know what color you are going to make your seahorse. They come in all sorts of colors and I just would love to know what you're going to do. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope you get to craft soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.